Welcome back to Ray's Garage. I'm Ray Cornelia. This is Propane Tank Forge. Several of my buddies asked me about my forge and how I build it. And with the ever growing popularity of forging fire, home blacksmithing, and forging, uh, this hobby and business is getting huge. And these things are very popular. So instead of repeating myself over and over, I thought I would take you in and show you the details on how I built my forge. So let's get closer and take a look. Unfortunately, this is not going to be a step-by-step -step video, but I will give you plenty of details to where you should be able to build one of these yourself and be successful. One of the main reasons why I didn't video it was I wasn't sure if I knew what I was doing here, and I wasn't even sure if the thing was going to work. With a little bit of trial and error, the thing actually turned out pretty darn nice. I can reach forge weld temperatures, which is approximately 26, 2800 degrees with no problem. So the first thing I started with is this 20 pound propane tank. It was an old outdated one, so I thought it would be a good candidate for this project. Now I wasn't even sure if it was gonna be big enough, if it was gonna to be too big, I wasn't sure. So of course I went to YouTube and watched a bunch of videos, I took some notes, this is what I came up with, and I'm going to share how I built mine. And I can tell you it works, and it works well. So, like I said, I started with this 20-pound tank, and the first challenge was removing this valve. These things are on there really tight, and I believe they use a sealer that actually permanently affixes them to the tank. But I have a solution for that, and I'm going to show you how to take them off. First, remove this little handle. Then get yourself a piece of two inch by three inch rectangle tube, weld a handle on it, and voila, you got yourself a big old wrench. The way I held on to it was I crimped this bottom ring in the vise and it held on to where I could break that valve loose and remove it. I've seen guys where they've actually take uh, ratchet straps and tied it to a fixed object like a pole or a tree, um, but you're going to need the leverage. They don't come off easy, but I got mine off with this little homemade tool. Works like a charm, man. Here's the actual valve I removed for my propane tank. Yeah, it's a little beat up, but that's what it looks like when you get it out. Now once you get this valve off, take extreme caution before and during that. Make sure that the tank is empty and once you get the valve off, you're going to want to flush this tank out several times. I filled mine with water completely up all the way to the top till it overflowed. That way it would push out any gas that was left in there. Dumped it out and I did it two or three times. To be quite honest, I was really nervous about cutting into this thing and making any sparks till I knew that it was safe. Once I got this valve off and got this thing flushed several times, uh, I was safe and it was safe to work on this thing. So the next step was I basically um, laid the tank down on the workbench and I supported both sides because I knew I'd be doing some surgery on this tank. So the very first cuts I made, I, I, op I, I found exact center of the tank and I opened up a seven inch wide by four inch high opening on the front and back. And I used a uh, cutting disc on the angle grinder to cut those pieces out. Did that on the front and the rear, cleaned up the corners and the edges, and then I had a completely open tank. Now, it's important to support the two sides, that way, the lines that you draw to make your openings, you want them to stay parallel to when you start it. So that way everything stays straight. The easiest thing I did and to figure out how to do it, I took two pieces of one inch black pipe and I, and I pushed them in. Let me turn it on the side. I pushed one in this side, one in this side, and I actually had this thing up off the workbench about a quarter or a half inch, I can't remember exactly. But then after I put the two pipes in here, I tack welded them on, and that way the thing could not roll. 
and everything was all, all fixed. My lines were, they stayed straight and parallel to the whole build process after that. So after cu cutting the seven inch by four inch openings on the front and rear, I took a piece of quarter inch flat bar. It's quarter inch by three inch, uh, but they don't stick out three inches. That's what I had on hand. And I made this opening. So basically, this is uh, sitting flush with the opening. So this is still seven inches by four inches. I used the uh, cutting wheel and, and, and cut the angles in here so it sits flush on the tank. So how I did that is I, I basically took the piece of flat bar, put it in here and scribed it. And then I just used a cutoff tool and, and cut them off. So I welded up a little box around the, the front and the rear. And now I have a nice clean opening and it actually extends the tank a little bit in the front and rear. The next thing I did was drill my two two inch holes on an angle in the tank. The way I came up with the correct angle is I basically aimed it towards what would be the corner of the openings. And that way it will, you'll, you'll see it in some of the video clips where I have it fired up and then once I fire it up you'll see which way the flames shoot. But this is a piece of uh, inch and a half ID, two inch OD, black pipe, about four inches long. These are drilled and tapped with quarter 20. They don't need to be this long, it's just what I had and I used it. And there's, uh, there's four points of contact on here. And the reason I did this is so I could center up the burner. Center the burner up inside this inch and a half port. Of course, welded them up and they ended up being flush on the inside. I can't show you that because I have the, the wool, the ceramic blanket on the inside now in the uh, Mizzou. Okay, I'm gonna talk about the burners for a little bit. I am not gonna explain in detail how these burners were built. I gotta give credit to a gentleman by the name of David Hammer. I will put a link to his video. He will show you how to build these burners. After a lot of trial and error, his were the easiest to build and the most effective. The only modification or change that I did from his design is I used a Lincoln number 30 tapered TIG tip. I believe it was a quarter 20 thread. Uh, don't, don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure it was. Um, it is very important to get everything exactly the way David explains in his video, and I will put a link to his video. Very effective, they work fantastic. Now there's another thing I wanna to mention too. A lot of people are showing off their burners, how they work outside of the forge and all that. Okay, it is very important to tune your burners after installed in your finished forge because every interior has a little bit different dimensions and that airspace will change the performance of your burner. So, it's not going to turn out exactly like mine. You have to tune yours. And the way to tune it is with the bell or the flare at the end of these. And I'll show you a picture. All this design is mine. This is a gas rated valve and I have one on each one. That way you could turn one burner off and just use one if you need only one burner. I have one of those on both as you see. It's teed off right here and I have a gauge. Now my gauge is after the regulated pressure gauge which I'll show you here in a minute. And right in front of that gauge I got one of these guys. It's a needle valve just like a torch would have on it. And that gives you the fine adjust right here. You're going to need that because you can also tune your gas flow going into your burners. I added a quick release propane valve here, which locks. Very convenient because I can just pop it right off, pop it back on. This is an adjustable regulator with, with a gauge, and I highly recommend steel braided line. It's just a safety feature to have when you have uh, propane gas. Especially in a workshop, you know, rubber can get nicked. So. Uh, that I believe I got on eBay for about 35-40 bucks. 
It's adjustable all the way up, I believe, to 60 PSI, which I never, I've never gone over 30. It's not really necessary. If your system's tuned correctly, something, something like that should just work perfect. But you definitely want an adjustable regulator with a gauge. That's going to show you how much pressure you're putting on your line. And then you can fine tune it with your needle valve. And that's why I have another gauge up here. Okay, here's a clip of the inside of my forge. You see that the opening is the same all the way through. So it's a seven inch wide by four inch high opening through and through. And now I'm gonna to explain to you exactly what I did to line this thing. Everything I talk about here, I will put in the uh, description below. I got everything from Hard Luck Forge and Supply. That's everything on the interior. The ceramic soft brick on the rear, I got from the ceramic shop. And I'll post all this, of course, in the description. On the inside, I got three inches of, of in-swool 2600 degree Fahrenheit number eight HTZ blanket. I got three inches of that on the inside. After putting the blanket in there, I sprayed it with one pint of ceramic fiber rigid hyzer. And that, that's like a, a blue fluid. And what it does is it takes your ceramic uh, wool and, and makes it stiff for the next layer. So it does, the next layer doesn't uh, leach into it. So then after that, I got a 10 pound bag of Mizzou Castable Plus Refractory. And I have one inch of that on the entire surface of the wool. And I did that in steps. First I did the bottom, I let it cure overnight. Then I flipped it over and then I did the top, let it cure overnight. Then I did one side, let it cure. Then I did the other side, let it cure. So after the um, Castable Plus refractory was fully cured, I waited several days. Um, this is a very important step. I bought four pounds of Plistex 900F. Now that, that will radiate the heat back into your forge. I have two layers of this Plistex on here, and that's, that's the coating that you see here. Okay, this is almost a consumable. And another thing with the Plistex is you want to be very careful. Because if you're forge welding, the resin or the borax or whatever you're using will, will break down this stuff pretty quickly. So you may want to use a sacrificial brick on the inside if you're going to be using a forge weld uh, resin. Okay, so then after the Plistex dried and cured, you have to go through several heat cycles. Bring it up warm, let it cool off. Bring it up a little hotter, let it cool off. Just keep doing that uh, several times and that way it cures everything. If not, if you, if you just fire your forge up after you're all done, you're going to just ruin the interior of all that work you did. See on the rear side here, I got this soft brick with a port cut in it. That port's about one inch by, I don't know, three, four inches. You have to have ventilation. You can't just close it in. That's, then you're creating a bomb, man. This brick is removable. If you have something long, it has to go through. In the one inch black pipe pieces I welded on that help it stay steady on the workbench. This is number six, three quarter inch rebar. I just made a little bit adjustable rack so you can pull it in and out to help with longer items. And this rest is exactly level with the top of this lip right here. The base is just some three inch pipe with a three-legged stand. And yep, that's right, these are hockey pucks. It's very stable. Three points of contact. I also wanted to mention, I stuffed some wool down around the burner, and that will keep from uh, the chimney effect, from both heat and flame to come up around your burner. Holds in heat, um, it serves several purposes, and it works very well. Let's fire it up. Pounds off the tank. 
fine tuning with the needle valve. I'm going to adjust the needle valve down. That's just like an idle. Let's give this baby some gas. Check out these video clips of when I fired this up for the first time. I then finished it off with some high temp header paint, flat black. Still haven't painted the base, but I'll get to that. This will conclude Propane Tank Forge. If I forgot anything, hit me up in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed, and until next time, see ya. Mm -hmm.